Vinny Sinceri, welcome back to T-Town. I hope you're doing well. Hey, very good, very good. Always good to talk week two wrap-up of college football and talk about Alabama football. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and man, I cannot wait. Uh, let's just maybe in a general way, uh, just some of your biggest takeaways. I guess if we're going to play the good, the bad, the ugly from Nick Saban on Monday afternoon, we might as well ask you, uh, you good, you bad, you're ugly, maybe your general analysis of the game. Good was how they started the game, handling their uh, handling what Alabama needed to do, come out, win this game, show that this offense was very dominant, show that this defense could take uh, away the passing game from Arkansas State early. The bad, I thought uh, the defensive front seven got pushed around a little bit. I thought they missed a couple tackles, and I'm still waiting for that linebacker like a C.J. Mosley, like a Rolando McClain, like a Dante Hightower to – to step up, or even like a Reuben Foster, a guy, someone to step up and anchor that defense and say, I'm going to be the leader, look to me, jump on my back, and now let's go win a championship. And the ugly, I think, is this offensive line that really, really needs to start producing a lot more because when you have three running backs like we have, and all three running backs don't have over 50 rushing yards at least, then I against Arkansas State, then I think there's something you have to go back and try and change and uh, revamp. Vinny, is there something that front on the opposing teams are doing to this offensive line to confuse them, or is this just simply uh, not punching people in the mouth? I just don't think they're punching people in the mouth. Nobody's stunting. I don't see a lot of, from these first two games, I don't see a lot of stunts on the defensive line. I don't see a lot of squish games or anything like that. I just see this offensive line not coming off the ball, not firing, not working up to the second level. Uh, their double teams are, kind of, are a little sloppy, and you know, against Arkansas State, you can get away with that. Against the Louisville, who really struggled week two, also you can get away with that. But whenever you get to LSU, you get to Auburn, possibly Georgia, possibly Ohio State, Clemson, those kinds of defensive lines are going to cause a lot of havoc. And not being able to get push is going to have to put a lot of pressure on Tua as a quarterback. And that's when people can start to press and start to make a lot of mental errors. What do you think was practice was like uh, here in, in campus? And maybe just looking back at, at some of the performances, even though it was a win, it was kind of sloppy, not a clean game. What do you think Nick Saban was like on a Monday following a type of performance like that? You know, I think he came in level-headed. He knows that he has a young team going into Old Miss this week. He doesn't want to come in and just, just destroy them, but he wants to tell them that there's a lot of room for improvement. He's going to tell them that, you know, he went out and handled our business which which was a positive, but a negative was how sloppy that performance was in respect to how Alabama has handled those kind of opponents in years past. And he's going to come in and say that we have to get stronger on the offensive line, be more dominant, control the line of scrimmage, and really having a quarterback being able to complete over 150 yards or whatever he was able to do um, against Alabama just isn't, isn't – up to par for what Alabama defense is. You, you have a quarterback over at Ole Miss who threw for, uh, I think, for over 400 yards in this game. It, it's going to be co something kind of scary going into uh, Oxford and seeing what this quarterback might be able to do against his secondary, especially if this front seven for the defensive line isn't going to be able to get the pressure that they haven't really shown in these first two games. So, so Nick Saban coming in level-headed. Let me walk you back to 2011 because I think that was one of the greatest defenses I've ever uh, witnessed uh, in, in, in covering college football, being a big, uh, long-time Alabama supporter. Uh, you, you, you go against uh, Georgia State, uh, G Georgia Southern, excuse me, Georgia Southern, and that was the run who run through the 10 whore. They ran through our blank like a, you know, crap through a 10 whore. Uh, I mean, Nick Saban walks in there level-headed on, on that Monday? I get, after Georgia Southern? No. I've never seen uh, Coach Saban as livid or as animated um, than he was the day after that game. He was very disappointed in the fact that not only did we not execute a game plan against a team that he thought and the coaching staff thought was a very inferior opponent compared to us, we had a lot of guys out there that didn't even want to be on the field. People were getting cut blocks. They were running the triple option. It wasn't the sexiest offense to go up against, and it was a little bit of a pain in the neck right before you go up against Auburn and you know, it, it wasn't what everybody wanted to do on the field. You know, it, it, we were trying to get ready for Auburn. We were trying to get ready for 
a possible run at a national championship. And he knew that guys in that game kind of walked walked off the field saying, I, I don't care what happens in this game. And that's what got Coach David upset is we need to be a team in his mind every game that wants to be on that football field putting fear in the, in the opponent's eyes stepping on their throat whenever they're on the ground. It doesn't need to be all the talk that all college football is nowadays. Him and Bill Belichick are old school guys to where you will, you allow your pads to do the talking. You hit people so hard that they don't want to come back in the football game. And that when they ever when they do get the football again, they think about that last hit and they're not worried about carrying the football and they're more worried about taking that hit so that opportunities like turnovers arise. And I don't see him being that mad at this defense compared to the 2011 defense because on that 2011 defense, you had Courtney Upshaw, Dante Hightower, Mark Barron, Robert Lester, Drake Patrick, Dean Milner, uh, C.J. Mosley. Though all those guys have been there, done that for a couple of years. They've been in those rules. They've had success, and they've shown that they could do things at a high level, and he could go at them at a, almost in a way that, you can't go against young kids like that anymore because they understand what Coach Dalen going to be trying to say to them. These young guys are still learning, still trying to understand, get their bearings on the football field. So Coach Dalen's kind of in that nurture aspect of their career at Alabama right now, trying to show them how to grow, show them how to work, show them how to perform on a football field. And during uh, the meeting today, he'll say, okay, here's a bad play, and this is why it's a bad play and here's a good play, and here's why it's a good play. And if we do more stuff like this on the good play, then we'll have more good plays, and we'll have a lot more success. And that's what he's going to have going through his mind throughout this throughout this week because he wants to build them up as they go into their first SEC road game. You know, I remember a quarterback uh, here that was an All-American. His name was A.J. McCarron. Our previous All-American uh, was in the 40s, the last time we had an All-American quarterback uh, here at the University of Alabama was Harry Gilmer back in the 40s. A.J. McCarron uh, was, a, was our second All-American there in 2013. And I remember a particular play that A.J. McCarron audibled out of a play, and Nick Saban gave him that famous spank and chewed his butt out uh, because he audibled out of a call. Uh, on Saturday, Nick Saban explained to us that Tua Tonga Valoa saw something in the defense, obviously checked out of the way the play was designed, and threw a, a bomb to a uh, Devontae Smith, I believe is who it was. I, I believe it was Devontae Smith, uh, that 41-yard touchdown pass. Uh, he checked out. He said he spotted something. I, I guess my, my comment is he really trusts Tua Tonga Valoa to check out some things and, and trust his eyes. So there's, there's two things that come down to him having two different types of reactions. One is you don't know what the play was that A.J., audible out of that could be a play that they had been practicing for a couple of weeks and they got the exact the exact defense that they were looking for they got everything in line and aj didn't feel comfortable with the play and he audible out of it and coach david might have been thinking i trust you to go out there and fulfill what that play was designed to do now the the flip the coin to a tongue of ola on this play might have had the freedom to check out and say okay Instead of single high, they're in cover two. And instead of running this right at the safety, let's run a skinny post and kind of split the two safeties. So there, there's freedom in certain plays, and then there's freedom in certain players. And you can't judge one play off of A.J. McCarron's career off of Tua sure. Tungavola because they're, they're two different times, two different time periods, two different plays, two different offenses. And – well, and, and maybe you can interpret plays. this for us, uh, Vinny. He called it a cat blitz on the backside. So a cat blitz, I think, is a, it, what Coach Saban usually says, the corner blitz, and he took advantage of the one-on-one that the safety had with the wide receiver, which is a very smart play by a young player, which you usually don't see. And that's, that's why you can't compare two different plays because obviously – it was a completely different defense that A.J. McCarron was going against on that play. So being able to dissect two different kind of plays and being able to compare them, isn't, you can't do it because you could say the 2011 defense was better than the 2013 defense, but they played completely different opponents and they played diff- completely different schemes that year. Now you can compare our 
Arkansas State versus Louisville, but to compare two different eras or two different teams is, is tough because you go against different players in each year that contribute to how certain players perform on the field. Let me ask you about Savion Smith. Uh, young man got a pick six, and it's good to see non-offensive touchdowns a part of it. What did you see on that particular play that Savion Smith, 38 yards, uh, pick six? It was a cat. It was a cat blitz. Also, I saw him coming off the edge. I saw a very smart and intuitive player seeing that he got that the defensive lineman got by very fast, seeing the, the screen develop. And you know, when you're an athlete and you can make those kind of plays, Coach Saban would say, "Don't leave your feet. Don't run. Don't leave your feet. The quarterback will pump face you and roll out of the pocket." But whenever you have an athlete that can see the ball leave the quarterback's hand, then get his feet off the ground, pick the ball, and take it back for six. There's not a lot of negatives that you could say on that certain play. And I think this kid is going to be really special. I see him moving his feet really well. I see him staying on top of wide receivers and not letting him get on, not letting them get on top of him. And I see a very comfortable young Alabama cornerback. Xavier McKinney at the Strong led the team in seven total tackles. Uh, what'd you see from number fifteen, Xavier uh, McKinney? I see somebody that's all over the field, and I, I think it's the perfect compliment because the week prior, everybody was raving about Deontay Thompson and saying that he was all over the field and making all kinds of plays. And I think the most important thing is whenever one player shows shows out and has an, a fantastic game, that the player that compliments him comes back and shows that he can do the exact same thing because now an offense can't say okay Deontay Thompson's in the middle of the field we're gonna run Xavier McKinney because he's the lesser of the two evils whenever you have two safeties that can be interchangeable that both bring the wood are able to hit and both can roam that middle of the field center field I think that adds value to your defense and it kind of shies away quarterbacks and offensive coordinators from doing certain things that they would do against other teams. You look at Jalen Hurts, got in the game uh, against Arkansas State. If going into that game, I would have probably been able to bet the the farm that I, I didn't think that we would see Jalen Hurts. However, we did. Uh, I'd love to hear your take on his performance. There's two things. One, Coach Saban's a genius because now who are you going to prepare for if you're uh, old Miss? The defensive coordinator now has to prepare for Tua Tonga Viola, and he has to prepare for Jalen Hurts. Two different types of quarterbacks. One is a predominantly passing quarterback that has the ability to run, and the other is a running quarterback that has the ability to pass. And I think that's the only way you can describe these two quarterbacks. One is a runner that has the ability to pass the ball, and one is a passing quarterback and a very good passing quarterback that has the ability to extend the play with his feet. Now, if we're talking Jalen Hurts' performance, I thought he played well. I still think that uh, if his number one read isn't open, he takes off the run, and that's why he had nine passing attempts instead of 12 to 15 passing attempts because he he gets back, his first read's not open, and he takes off the run. And there's nothing, there's nothing bad against Arkansas State because you can get away with that stuff. But like I said, whenever you go against LSU, you go against Auburn, you go against Ohio State, Clemson, those elite teams that have the defense that is like an NFL defense, that are 300-plus pound defense linemen that run like they're linebackers, you can't get away with it anymore. And to have success at the next level, and the next level right now is the college football playoff and the national championship, you have to be able to pass the ball as a quarterback. And you can, you can see on TV that Nick Saban was not necessarily frustrated with Jalen because he was having success during the game. He was frustrated in the fact that he still can't get out of his own head of feeling comfortable in the pocket, going to his first read. If his first read's not there, go to your second read. If your second read's not there, hit the check down. Limit the hits on your body. And also talking about hits on your body, if Tua Tungvaluus doesn't start getting down, I'm going to have to jump on the field whenever I'm at Texas A&M and tackle him and tell him to get on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I guess, is that just something you learn as a, as a, as a young player that you develop and uh, you, maybe some quarterback needs to walk up to him and say, Hey, listen, man, don't take those hits. They're not worth the two, you know, worth the two or three yards. You know, young, young guys in, in the beginning of their career, whether it's college or NFL, 
they think they're invincible, and it's the fact that they've had so much success at a young age and so much success doing things their way that it, it, it takes time to get out of their own way. Um, I think he'll mature into it, but I think it also is going to take Loxley and Coach Saban coming up to him and being, being pretty stern and saying, Tua, you're, you're not doing things correct. Watch Peyton Manning, watch Tom Brady, watch Aaron Rodgers, watch Big, Big Ben. Those guys who've been playing for 10-plus years, had a lot of success, all won Super Bowls, and they get the yards they can get with their feet, and they slide and they minimize the hits on their body. Because having success in college and in the NFL is longevity, and the only way you can have a long career is by not taking those kind of hits. We're talking to Vinny Sensuri right now, former defensive back at the University of Alabama, multiple national titles here in Tuscaloosa. Vinny, outside of Alabama, uh, what was your biggest takeaway from college football, something that grabbed your attention outside of the Crimson Tide? I think we talked about it on Friday. I think it's that Texas A&M Clemson game. You were all over this, man. You were all over this game. I, I, I really think that this quarterback controversy is starting to affect Clemson's ability to get in the end zone, and that's one of my concerns about Alabama pushing back and forth at quarterback is because you, you don't have your guy that you can lean on when the going gets tough. And the going got tough against Clemson, and they leaned on Kelly Bryant. And I think that should show you that in these next couple games, they should lean on Kelly Bryant a little bit more. I'm not saying don't give Trevor Lawrence the opportunity to come in and kind of do cleanup duty like uh, Tua Tungabola did last year. But you need a guy that can come in and win certain football games. There's going to be certain football games this year that Clemson is going to struggle they're going to need someone that they can lean on, and it, I think it's Kelly Bryant right now. Now, for the future, I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a heck of a quarterback, but you need a quarterback that has that type of charisma, that type, has that ability to go into a opposing team stadium and win football games. And when you have two quarterbacks that are going back and forth, they can't get comfortable, and you allow an inferior team like Texas A&M, and Texas A&M is not a terrible team, but do I think they're a team that should have been able to compete with Clemson if they had one quarterback in the game the whole time? No, I don't. We're talking to Vinny Sinceri each and every week, and uh, certainly a big weekend of college football. We'll catch up on Friday and be able to sort of break this down and look ahead to all these great matchups, and I cannot wait to hear uh, what you think about Alabama and Ole Miss. That'll be on Friday. Uh, Vinny, we always talk on Monday and Friday, and that's made possible by this great sponsor. Tell us more. You know, Rounders on the Strip, it's uh, the best place to watch football games either prior to or after the games. It's located right uh, across the street from Publix. They have their 11 by 17 foot big screen. They have over 50 different kinds of beers, 30 plus TVs. And if you like to dance like I like to dance, they have their Las Vegas inspired boom boom room, which lets you get a little, a little dancing on in your, uh, and your Alabama gear, and they're also located on Twitter and Instagram at Rounders UA. Now, 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 be honest, with Vinny, can, can can you really dance? Oh, I can dance now. It's not the prettiest sight, but I think I can dance, and I think I look pretty good while I'm dancing. <laughs> hey, hey so, so, something tells me if you hang around Nick Saban. I mean, I'm sure you've seen these off-season uh, videos of Nick Saban. I don't know what. What? Come on, help me, guys, across the room. What was Nick Saban doing? You know that that yeah, Cupid slide, shuffle, right? Yeah, there it is, Cupid, Cupid shuffle. shuffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you seen these videos of your former coach uh, doing the Cupid shuffle? Hey, coach, coach Saban would say he could cut the rug back in his day. Now, you know he he can he can have a little fun now too. It's just the difference between being in an offense or on on the football field and being at his home with uh, Miss Terry and having a good time. Hey, and 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 there's something about that five star hanging out in that same living room probably made him cut the rug. Hey, you know, you got to do stuff to get recruits sometimes. And you got Coach uh, Coach Sweeney dancing over at Clemson. You got to show them that, you know, these old timers can still cut the rug a little bit. <laughs> hey, no doubt about it. Hey, Vinny, I always enjoy the segments, man. Outstanding work. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you Friday. Thank you, sir. Have a good one.